My wife has asked me to come up with a candle holder for a candle in a jar. Okay, as I said, my wife has asked me to come up with a candle holder for a candle in a jar. Now, the problem with these things is that a normal candlestick that we would normally do looks terrible with these jars, right? I did one of these for a jar ages ago, actually, but it was a big arch. I'll leave a link up there. I'm trying to remember did I do it as a one or a two part video. I honestly can't remember. I think it might have been two. But anyway, I'll leave a link to the first one up there. Um, if it is two, I'll leave a link to the two of them down in the description. Right, now as I said, normal candle holders that we would turn for a large candle would be like um, a large candlestick. A large chunky kind of candlestick. But with the jars, they look terrible. So what I'm going to do is I have an 8 inch piece of Tiger here, markings in it are all right, they're not great, right. uh, it's kind of plain looking on the ends you can see, right. so uh, what I'm actually going to do is almost like a volcano bowl but with the candle in the middle that sits down, now the whole thing with these is if you just put it sitting there it looks terrible if you go too high you're risking the heat you need to go down about an inch maybe for it to look right right so uh as i said that's the idea that's in my head anyway so quick look at the blank right not gonna make any difference what way i pick to do this so i'll mount this up and i'll be back in a sec Right then, we're mounted up, and first thing as usual, we're going to round it off and flatten it off and put a mortise on it. Right, we're mortised up. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of turn a little bit up here because what I want is like a saucer on the bottom with like a volcano in the middle so I'm going to turn this slightly it's not going to go up I'm going to cut it off about there probably right, actually to show you what I'm going to do to show you what's in my head I'll actually put a cut in there now right, I'm going to make it clearer for what's in my head Right, I'm gonna turn the bowl up to there, the bowl part of this up to there. Slightly high. Put edge on the gouge.
put a slight slant on that, very slight, so that it sits on a rim here. Doesn't need to be a lot. Feather it out. That'll do it. Right, I've got a finish cut on this. Side bevel. Pull any tail marks or anything. A mark there, I'm just trying to get out. Got it. Well, it's still slightly there. Yeah, got it that point. Right, now I'm gonna sand and finish that bottom part. Right, so we'll be back in a sec. Right then, just doing the Yorkshire grit. And this week's Yorkshire grit bit will stick to Irish legends. Seems so the last one about the Banshee was quite popular. Right. And this week we will go for the Puka. Okay. Puka in Irish means ghost or spirit. Right? And something like the Banshee, it can be both malevolent or it can be benevolent. Right? It depends really. But uh, a Puka is basically the Irish version of a trickster. Right? For anybody who's seen any of the Marvel movies or nothing like that. Think Loki, and you have uh, basically a puka, right? Now, normally, uh, the puka would appear as a horse, right? And it will be jet black, have a flowing mane, depending on which version of the legend you hear, it could have chains hanging out of it and its eyes could either be fiery red or golden right now the thing about the puka is as i said normally it would appear as a horse but the puka is a shape changer it can appear as anything and it can also speak right uh the puka the creature itself is normally found in the countryside right they they don't really put it, live in the cities right and uh, it can be found in mountains and forest trails and in some versions of the legend the puka lives in the small lakes the small lake mountain forest lakes that are dotted around the country and there's actually some places that uh, you'll still hear the word in the name, right? Whether there's a lake there or not, like two I can think of offhand is there's a local one here called Mwingafuka, and there's one up in Dublin called Paulafuka, right? And basically, they all mean the same kind of thing. Basically, it's place of the puka, right? Are you going to say a place with lake or area or hole or whatever, right? But it, they all basically mean place of the puka, right? Now, as I said, the puka is a trickster. And one of the things it had a fondness for doing, when it was in its horse farm, 
was to convince unwary travellers to take a ride, especially if they were drunk. Right? So Puka would convince the person to get on the Puka's back and then it would just take off and it wouldn't stop until dawn and then it would basically throw the person off its back and leave. Right? Uh, this story was often used for drunk people who woke up, couldn't remember what happened the night before and had no idea how they ended up where they were. Right? I can just imagine like, hundreds of years ago how often that one was used where the husband went out drinking and came back two days later and the wife was fit to kill him and he just go the puka got me so you can just imagine how often that one was actually used I mean, the puka frequently got the blame for breaking down fences and flattening crops and stuff on farms especially new farms uh, because the farm had been put where the puka liked to run or was put close to their area as I said puka's kind of had areas they lived in and if you happen to farm one of them the puka mightn't like it and you could wreck your fences or run your livestock off right now the puka never did any direct harm to anyone right but what they did had consequences like destroying the fences on a farmer's land or running the, running the livestock off could ruin a farmer right now in its human form right it had one characteristic that was the same as its horse form it had flowing jet black hair right now the puka would basically was a lonely spirit and it used to love talking to people right now Depending on what the person was like, the puka would give them advice, right? And he'd regale the person with tall tales of something that would happen in the future. Normally something disastrous. Okay. Now, if the person acted on this and saved themselves from the disaster, that was an example of the puka being benevolent. He had liked the person and had given them a warning of something that was about to happen that could ruin them. Right? Now, you go into hundreds of stories and versions of the puka, but that is just a basic version of what the puka is. Right? As I said, think Loki. Right? He played his tricks on people, right? especially that one in his horse farm where he dumped them miles away. And there was no real malice in it, it was just that's what the puka did. Right, right so I'll keep going on with this until I get clean cloth back and I'll be back when I'm buffing the wax off so I'll see you in a minute right then, just buffing the wax off so what do you think of the early fragments? it's I'm doing so there's something somebody mentioned to me that it'd be a cool thing to do is actually do early legends in the uh, Yorkshire Grip pit. So I decided to go for it. So what are you thinking of? Is it a good idea or a bad idea or what? And there we go. There's the base of it done. Yeah. The dark stripe is only kind of there. As I said at the start of this, there's um, it's not the best example for markings but 
it'll be pretty anyway. Right, I'll flip this over and uh, be back in a sec. Right now, we're flipped over. So, the first thing we do, of course, is face it off. Low. So do that one on the mat, actually, slightly low, and then down that. the caliper set up for they're slightly thinner than the uh, size of the candle jar there we go right now I'm gonna cut in there so that the candle would slip in there and as I said I only want to go down about an inch of even that Garage, use that. <coughs> right, check size before I go any deeper. Should be too big. It is slightly. Front. Right. Same thing as usual when you're doing something like this. I'm just going to ease up on it. Yeah, that's it. See, I don't want it to fit too tight because of the heat. I want it slightly loose like that. Now, we go a bit deeper. This the bottom of this to be totally flat, so I'll do it with the parking tool. slightly loose that's what I want yeah that'll do it just nicely now what I want to do is the volcano part right so I want to go down inside this bowl but I want that to swoop down and come up so what I'm going to do is take the corner off I'm going to be slightly too high there Closer. Start 
start getting the swoop shape I'm looking for. Start coming in on the ball part. I'm slightly on for finishing cuts, so I'm going to sharpen the gouge again. Now I'll start those finishing cuts. Now I want to go in there. Continue their curve down. You gotta be really careful when you're doing the bottom of a curve like this that you don't cross the curve. If you get what I mean? That you don't hit this curve with there as you're going down because you get a catch. depth yeah that looks okay right but that is too wide there so I want to bring the curve in a bit in a bit more a little bit more graceful of a curve Cut here. Square the legs back off because I made a mistake there. Now that curve isn't smooth just there. straightened out there, but I didn't like it. Now there's a slight bump just here. Yeah, that'll do it. Right, and then we'll sand and finish that. So I'll do that, I'll be back in a sec. Right then, just buffing the wax off. Uh, came with pretty much as I had in my head. And, uh, the design is based off of, you know, those things you've seen, the old movies, where there was like a saucer with a thing in the middle of holding a candle. And you see people walking around with them. 
that's what it's kind of based that's what I kind of based the design on but uh, so the awkward thing about those about these candles is the jar tall won't work because the jar will look off and it's got to be kind of bigger than the jar so you got to go for width rather than height there we go Right, I'll take it up and give you a better look at it. So, back in a sec. Right, and there we have it. A candle holder for those awkward jarred candles. Uh, yeah, it actually didn't turn out too bad. I quite like the design. Uh, so, those things can be quite awkward to do. And I probably would never have done one except my wife asked me to do one. So, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you wouldn't mind, click on, like on the video. And I'll see you in the next one.